Julia Jackson. There are nearly 53,000 youth being held in facilities away from home. And nearly one in 10 are housed in an adult jail or prison. We've all completed current events in Mr. Rash's Global Issues class. Some and have learned about violent juvenile criminals, some tried as adults and some not. Violent juvenile criminals should not be tried as adults. First, I'll be discussing um, adults being housed in prisons with juveniles being housed with prison in prisons with adults. Then I'll be discussing the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act. And finally, I'll be talking about options other than prison. Let's begin talking about juveniles in prisons. Kathleen H. Hyde, who has a PhD in criminology and was a professor of criminology at the University of South Florida in the article, Who's In, Who's Out, and Who's Back, published July 2001, concluded that 59 juveniles were committed to the Department of Corrections in Florida between January 1982 and January 1984. Almost two thirds of them were committed back or were released before November 1999 and within three years, 60% of them were back into prison. Dr. Bechtold, who has won the Ellen Grenberg Excellence in Graduate Research Award for Social Ecology in the article, Tried as an Adult, Houses a Juvenile, A Tale of Youth from Two Courts Incarcerated Together, published in 2014, stated that housing juveniles with adults only increased their likelihood of being victimized, creating criminal skills, or attempting suicide. Incarceration not only has serious effects on juveniles personal relationships, but also their social and economic prospects. There's a political stereotype that if a 14 or a 16 year old commits the same crime as an adult, that they're automatically as sophisticated as an, as an adult. When in reality, they're a lot younger than their age emotionally. The youth are in such an uncertain and an unformed state of social identity. Now that I informed you on the harmful effects of housing juveniles with adults, I can tell you about the Prevention Act to help them. There, the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Preve Prevention Act is an act to help juvenile criminals. This act influenced the evolution of the current modern, modern day juvenile system that set up incentives for the states to help conform their juvenile proceedings. Shelby Swartz received her JD from Columbia University School of Law and graduated with honors in the article, Harboring Concerns, published in 2009, saying that this act found that nearly half of the violent crimes were being committed by juveniles and the current system did not adequately deal with the need for individual justice and individual help. The federal government provides these incent financial incentives in the form of grants for the states to create, create a plan to prevent juvenile delinquency. This act wants to create community-based alternatives for juveniles in the forms of detention centers or treatment facilities. The historical mission has been to rehabilitate juveniles instead of punishing them. Now that I've told you about the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act, I can tell you about some options other than prison. Some options are house arrest, treatment facilities, detention centers, or group homes. The can't Wendy Sawyer, a journalist for Prison Policy Initiative who plays, a who plays a crucial role in engaging the public with criminal justice issues in the article, Youth Confinement, The Whole Pie, published 2018, states that putting juveniles into treatment facilities instead of harsh prisons will only benefit them because they'll be getting the help that they need. Group homes keep juveniles accountable by monitoring the time inside of the homes and outside. The Campaign for Youth Justice, an organization founded in 2005 that is dedicated to ending incarceration, trying and sentencing of juveniles in the adult justice system in the article, Jailing Juveniles, the dangers of incarcerating youth in adult jails in, their, in America published in November 2007, found that juveniles that were in adult jails were 36 times more likely to commit suicide than those that were in a detention center. Now that I've told you, first I talked about housing juveniles with adults, then I discussed the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act, and finally I informed you on options other than prison. Violent juvenile criminals should not be tried as adults. As juveniles ourselves, we've all made mistakes that we regret. Although juveniles that are tried as adults make bigger mistakes, let's reduce the one in 10 that were tried as adults and give them a second chance to make better choices. Or 30.